So in this lecture, we'll be discussing the relationship between state space models and simple RNNs. Let's begin by reviewing the state space model so that we begin this lecture at a common point. Okay, so the state space model is a linear model that specifies how some hidden state vector x of t is computed from the previous hidden state vector x of t minus 1 and some control input vector u of t. Note that these are related by matrices. By convention, we call these matrices a and b. We also have another equation telling us how the hidden state is related to our observation vector y of t. Sometimes y of t can also be directly affected by the control input u of t, but very often this is simply left out. In the second equation, by convention, we call the matrices C and D. So just as a quick reminder of how such a state space model might be used in the real world, recall that this is the set of equations that we use in control systems. An example of a real-world problem is the inverted pendulum, which you've seen if you've taken my courses on reinforcement learning. What's cool about typical courses on control systems is that, unlike reinforcement learning, we often get to work with real-world projects. So on the image here, you can see an example of a live physical carpool system that can be controlled using the techniques of control theory. So as an example of how this relates to our equations, we might represent our state vector with four measurements, which are horizontal displacement, horizontal velocity, angle from the vertical, and angular velocity. What we get to observe might only be the displacement and angle, since measuring velocity could be more difficult. In practice, because this system is based on the laws of physics, we can use physics equations to determine the matrices A, B, C, and D. Okay, so now let's recall the equations for a simple RNN. Suppose that we also include the output layer as well, and we assume that this RNN is many-to-many, -many, meaning that we compute the output for every time step. Note that for simplicity, I've excluded bias terms. In this case, our hidden state vector is called h of t, which is dependent on the previous hidden state vector h of t minus 1, and the model input x of t. They are related by the weights, w hidden and w input, with an activation function sigma, which can be the rel u, tan h, and so forth. Furthermore, the output y of t is related to the hidden state h of t using the weight matrix w output. Of course, at this point, it should be obvious that the state space model and the RNN are pretty much exactly the same, except that we've renamed some variables and the RNN has a nonlinearity. As such, we can conclude that the RNM is just a nonlinear generalization of the state space model. In addition, using the techniques of machine learning, this gives us another way to learn the matrices A, B, C, and D without having to derive physics equations ourselves.